Welcome to the Hoops Capital Podcast, brought to you by Harvey Norman and powered by Rode. I'm one half of the hosting duties, King's Big, Geordie Hunter, here with Big King, Wollongong entrepreneur, King Gong, Paul Smith. We're the only basketball podcast here at Hoops Capital that's not going to have much to say about X's and O's, so we'll see how that takes us. Uh, hopefully we can um, bring a little bit of entertainment. Um, this is going to be a weekly occurrence, at least that's the plan. Um, featuring yourself and myself, Paul Smith and Geordie Hunter, we should just formally get through that. <laughs> the weird thing about this podcast is that normally podcasts have to go about 100 episodes and they have to do a bunch of um, uh, listens to get sponsors. We've started with sponsors already. Cart before the horse. That and I love that. I love that. Yeah. So firstly, thank you to Harvey Norman for all your support and helping us put this together. And um, to our friends at Road who've done an amazing job setting us up with the best equipment possible. So there's no doubt they're even, they can even make us look and sound good, which is pretty rare. So Hard to do. We're grateful for that. So thank you to those guys. And as we go through the shows and in the future, we'll give those guys a bit of a shout out as we go forward. But uh, so here we are. We've talked about what we wanted to do and uh, the day's <laughs> arrived. And uh, we've got guests. Today we've got Jalen Adams joining us. Um, and so we'll have a procession of guests, not all basketball, we want to talk about things that are different, that are a bit strange, peculiar, and also mix in a bit of X's and O's in that as well. But the uh, main thing is we just want to have fun and get a bit of enjoyment. So hopefully we can achieve that. We'll see. Yeah. Fun, fun sounds like something we can arrange. Yeah, well, we've got to do that. Now, mate, uh, good start of the year for you. Yeah. We'll definitely take it. It's, uh, the team's doing well. Mm-hmm. That's uh, first and foremost what we're after. and you know, That's a lie. Tough one. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna, not going to start this off on a selfish note. No, we'll get to there later. <laughs> Few episodes in. Um, yeah, it's been uh, you know some good opportunity on on mm. my end. So it's um, just trying to make the most of it. There's room to grow, and you know we'll we'll see where we can take it. So the pre-season, off-season for you, pretty unusual. Mm. Um, traipsing around Europe, something like that. Yeah. Art galleries. What were you doing? <laughs> what was going on? Mostly art galleries. <laughs> no, um, go on. The the idea was to you know at my size I when I, I broke a lower extremity so it's it's not ideal mm. but towards the end of last season it was just starting to be a bit gimpy so I had right. to instead of playing in the off season as most yeah. folks would decided to take a bit of time and um, my fiance was off to do some work in Europe and I right. said May, maybe I'll. Tag I'll along. Tag along. I don't fit in a suitcase, but we. Were you the Were you the, uh, the man bag? Were you the yeah. the the guest? The, the house thing? husband. Right. Okay. <laughs> right. How did that feel? Um, look, I'm a modern man. I'll do what. There's a lot to be said for it. <laughs> yeah, I'll do what you. I got to do. But yeah, it was a good. Uh, I ended up being there for two months, so it was kind mm. of a. Did that know, go longer than you thought? Um, did it go longer than I thought? It was kind of like I had a date that I was going to come back, and yeah. we kind of arranged. A little bit into that off season, right. starting to get over there, and my fiance mm. was there for four months, so okay. she was doing, you know, she had a good little stint over there, and she was working, working. Yeah, yeah. I mean, once you're over there, you can kind yeah. of sneak in a weekend here and there yeah. to go see yeah. some places, yeah. and we definitely we made the most of it. Mm. Um, was it London based? Were you in London or? Uh, we were actually it was Paris based for the first okay. two months. She was London based for the next two months, so obviously. Oh, okay. The bit you did was in Paris. Yeah. yeah so. It Do was, you see Wemby? Um, I kept my eyes peeled, and he's not a hard one to. He's a Did hard anyone one to think you were Wemby, wandering around as tall as you are? <laughs> That'd be tall, sister, I imagine. But <laughs> he uh, is so big. He is a big boy. Some of I, the things he's doing, I just can't believe it. Like, it's we had scouts coming through, or scouts coming through last season, back of end of our season, you know, and they're looking through the kid, the litter, looking to see what they could find, and um, a couple of them had been over there to look at it and. They came, this is back in what, May, March, April, whenever. They said, it's real. Yeah. He's real. Yeah. And then he did that, what was it? He did the summer league stint and sort of wasn't that great. And yeah. then it just, the stuff in the preseason has been incredible. Just some of the, how close he is to the rim is off, uh, <laughs> maybe Crazy. underestimated. Crazy. But just the length and the skill set is just in combination is just full unbelievable on. and so um you feel but you do feel like your form so far this season yeah yeah and obviously there's always room to grow and pieces to keep adding and mm. 
as the, the boys kind of go through that early season teething process, it, it's good that we've put up a few wins rather than learning the hard way. But yeah, we'll. Uh, well, we had a hard in. way on the weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a uh, that's a good side that you know. You this know, is what, Tasmania. So for the record, we're doing this on the week. The Tuesday after the – we're recording yeah, on the Tuesday after on, Tasmania, yeah, on. which I think a few of us are still licking our wounds over. Yeah, I was sitting at dinner last night and I was just like, I, I'm just not – I'm still not very good at losing, losing. it, really. I oh, carry it around yeah. like a like a sack. So i got to uh, – that's some personal development I've got to get through. But <laughs> it's uh, – you never want to lose at home, obviously. No, nah, that's a tough um, one. We've lost them already, so it's – you want to get that – you know, yeah. when you get a chance to get them back straight away, that – brutal that's uh that's what you want and then not to be able to get that done was yeah. tough but you know we'll take a lot away from it and i mean they're side in form right now they're mm. really firing on all cylinders well i'm a bit of a stirrer and i you know i like to you know interact a little bit on twitter but this is, where's this going this is good well stuff. i'm just telling you they, <laughs> those tasmanian fans are brutal i mean like they're they make the Perth people look like kindergarten children in terms of what they can get up to on Twitter and the way they get at you. So, um, yeah, I got a little bit of PTSD over it, but that's okay. <laughs> Last time I looked, you don't win championships in October, Geordie. No, and that's, you know, a lot of the narrative going into this season is us being peppered with questions about, like, are you going to get that three-peat done and how's that going to look? Mm. And it's like, we're going to try and win this weekend. And then, you know, hopefully by the yeah. end of the season you've clocked up enough wins to give yourself yeah. a chance. Yeah. And that's all you can really do. And, you know, we didn't take care of business this weekend, but there's basketball to come. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Cairns this weekend. On Saturday, yeah. They're, they're just back from the state, so that'll be their first yeah. hit out. Oh, no, they've got, they got Illawarra they're going on first. Thursday, yeah. That's, yeah. Right, that's right. So hopefully Illawarra can soften them up a little bit for us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that'll be uh, – we'll take that for sure. But that's always a – that's a tough road trip going up there, and it's nice and sticky up there um, this time of year. So I think we'll they're having a DJ Hogue welcoming party as yeah, well. Yeah, he, he deserves it. He did well for him, that's for sure. Yeah, well, I don't think it's going to be that welcoming, personally. <laughs> I, I texted with DJ this afternoon. I said, how are you feeling about it? And he said, they're going to be waiting for me. So we'll see how they go. It'll be, uh, I guess this is us saying that he's playing this weekend. That's, uh, uh, well, I hope he is. <laughs> <laughs> same, same. It'll be great to have him back. He's a... Uh, He's a hell of a player and, you know, bummer losing him in the preseason. But, you know, it's I not the first time that's happened I think he's been beat up, us. not playing. I think it's hurt him. I think he's, I mean, talking to him, he's frustrated. He wants to get out yeah. of it. You know. There's not a lot of, uh, you know, jobs where your shoulder can come out and all of a sudden you can't do no. your job. So yeah. he's uh, he's been chomping at the bit. He's been working hard and he's looking good. Yeah. All right, so we've done all the softening up things and we yeah. need to get ready for our first guest who's going to join us. And, of course, we're introducing our first guest in our first reboot of Hoops Capital podcast. And uh, joining us today is none other than the one and only Mr. Jalen Adams. Jalen, welcome to the house, man. It was good, fellas. I've passed that on from Jalen. A bit of skin for Thanks, you, Thanks, Jay. <laughs> when are we getting a secret handshake going, you and me? We'll work on it. We'll work on it. I'm not great at them, though. I, I, some, the handshake is an issue for me. I, we'll try to keep I just it don't get it right. You know? Try to keep it simple for you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that, man. Well, that's good. That's good don't to have you here. with that. You can't do them if you want to do a secret handshake. Oh, then it's not a secret. No, don't say that you don't know how to do it. Oh, really? Back yourself and then maybe you'll... Be no, able to but I'm, I'm old and white. It's a, bit of a, <laughs> got, it's a bit of a challenge for me, this thing. But, uh, but that's okay. But it's good being old and white. But I tell you what, I wish I was young and talented like uh, these two blokes, I must say. Good to have you here, mate. Now, when we're... You know, normally when you're doing crash test dummies, you get the thing with the yellow dots on the side of the head that sits there like this and hits the car. You're on our first step, and uh, it's just great to have you here, and thanks for coming and joining us, mate. Well, thanks for having me. It's, it should be fun. Yeah, well, Welcome so. to the train wreck. Oh, <laughs> you know, we'll see how we go. Well, we had a train wreck on Sunday. We, we got over that bit. We've already talked What's about that the first part anyway. <laughs> but that's okay. So, mate, welcome back to Sydney. Um, how's it? How is it? What do... What have you found different and what have you found the same and what's what's what have you what have you enjoyed about the Sydney itself and what are you feeling, you know? Uh, it's it's a lot it's a lot newer, I'll say, just because it was COVID the last time I was here. Yeah. So I've been outside a lot more. Mm. Um enjoying Sydney, enjoying the beaches, mm. enjoying some, you know, newfound places. Oh yeah. Yeah, so it's a it's it's very new, I'll say. Right. Yeah. Got any hot tips on what, what spots have you picked up? Mm. Um Food wise, um, I haven't gone far with the food to be honest with you. 
Uh, everything else is kind of, I've been downtown a lot more. So, you know, stores that everybody kind of goes to. Yeah. Um, casino, obviously, good pastime. <laughs> And uh, because they've got the big screens there for the televisions, and for that, sure. Right? Yeah, that's that's, what you know what I'm saying? Yeah, to eat and just you know, yeah, watch all the games at once. <laughs> that's exactly right, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, that, that's they've been seeing me a lot lately just to watch games. I am I right in saying that DJ Hogue's a bit of a influence in these little efforts of yours outside Sydney Olympic Park? Yeah, for sure. DJ and Denzel, um, yeah. you know, DJ lives in Bondi by the beach, yeah, that's how you say it, right? Bondi. Uh, bon, Bondi, if you Bondi. wish. You go Bondi, you got I that go right. Bondi. That's pretty good. But uh, he lives there, though, so, you know, I spend a lot of time just at his yeah. house. and We'll get some food by the beach, stuff yeah. like that. Sightsee out there. So mm. I, I definitely say he's a big yeah. influence in that. You enjoying it? You enjoying yourself being back here? Most definitely. Most definitely. The atmosphere here, the weather, obviously, is yeah. far from what it is where I'm from. So it's just what? nice being back. Well, how, it's unbelievable to think you grew up in DMV and... You know, you know, DC sort of area. That is a brutal environment there. That weather, man. The winter and the summers are humid. The whole thing. You yeah, know? most definitely. It's not really. It's not a bunch of great weather, like you said. Yeah. It's it snows in the in the winter. Yeah. And it's extra sticky in the summer. So, and we don't have no beaches. So it's kind of you just outside. You know, sweating for the most part. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so one quick question on food. I always like to ask ex people from overseas, when you, when you go home, what's the first thing you go to? When you're like, are you an in and out guy or what's, you, what's the thing you, you know, when I'm traveling, you know, I, a meat pie is mm -hmm. something I like. Oh, I love a meat pie. What, yeah. What's the thing for you? Chipotle. Chipotle, okay. Chipotle for sure. Really, yeah. Good burrito bowl. Give get the dressing. You can't forget the dressing. <laughs> yeah, you got the do you got the avocado on that? Nah, I'm, I'm not a guac guy. You know, oh. the sour cream, cheese, okay, lettuce, hot sauce. Cool. Chipotle is dangerous, man. Sneaky you order food. If you, if All right, careful. so let's get the show started. <clears throat> we have ten envelopes in here. Each of these envelopes contain a question. Okay, you're gonna pull one of these envelopes, but we're gonna play along, right? So, um, so what we're gonna do is you can we have to we have to answer the same question, all right? So, um. So here we go. So I'll uh, I'll let you choose the envelope. So you friend. pulling one too? No, no. We're going to answer the same question as you. All or right. if you want, we'll we'll pull a qu we'll pull a question. I mean, you might as well first first you know. Okay, we oh, pull first. one. <laughs> Let's see what the question is before yeah, we first, decide. Yeah, first. Yeah, go. I'll right. take this one. All right, number four. Let's see. Door four. What do you got? Let's see. Lucky number four. Do we have a number four on the team? I don't think so. Oh man, best night out you've ever had. <laughs> I'm definitely choosing it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I feel about this question. Is it out here? Uh, in the last, let's go, okay, best night out you've ever had in the last 12 months. In the last 12 months. Yeah. It's a sticky question right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a trap. <laughs> we can edit it. Uh, it's a, we, are we doing one pass? Yeah, do you want to pass. pass on that one? <laughs> I mean, I won't pass. I'll, I'll play. I'll, I'll try to PG my night out. Yeah, okay. I don't That's have a cool, cool answer, man. Um, last 12 months, so I went home, I got home a little bit early, it was cold outside, my friend owns a restaurant, um, so I got some, you know, free food at the restaurant, night started good, Yeah. then I went to my little brother's game, Right. Uh, I hadn't seen a, uh -uh, I haven't seen him play live since he was a kid, just because we always play basketball at the same time, so I got home, got to see him hoop. Uh, he he went crazy too. Had a great game. Um, my little sisters actually came to the game too, so I got to hang with the fam at the mm -hmm. game. So that was a good start to the night. Uh, I don't know how to PG this part. <laughs> <laughs> you just you do your thing, man. Yeah, for sure. It was um, bowling. Yeah, it was some <laughs> it was some fun events after that. After after the game. <laughs> You know, the nightclub. Did action. that involve the family with you, or you went? Nah. You, you went solo after that. After, after the family, it, it kind of went left. It okay, just, right. Yeah. Me and one homie, a yeah. close friend, uh, we went to a little, went to a little. How y'all say it out here? Bowling. A little bowling alley. <laughs> bowling alley. Right, okay. A little nice bowling alley with yeah. some nice people and nice music. Yeah. Oh my and, god. And uh, we had some nice, you know, refreshments. Refreshments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were there for a long time. We actually went back to the restaurant. They reopened it for us, 
And really? You got that much pull? Well, no, nah, it's, it's really my friend's dad's restaurant. Right. And it's a nice little African food okay. uh, restaurant. So Cool. Yeah, so he he kept it open for us. He really runs it. So Did you get home in us. daylight? We got home and it was light outside. Yeah, that's a good night. <laughs> yeah, that is a good night. So that that's a, called playing through, by the way. You play sure. through. We played through the whole night. The sun came up early. Yeah, yeah the sun came up early. You know, <laughs> daylight savings. Yeah, all that. That was yeah. a lot of it. Yeah, yeah. So that was a great night right yeah. there. Well, I, look, I've, I've got this theory about nights out is that, you know, when you plan a, a 21st or a wedding, a bachelor, a bachelor party or something like that, there's always this anticipation. It's just like crazy, yeah, everyone's, everyone's frothing, but then you hit the night and it just doesn't quite fire. Then this thing called a quiet little drink where you go out with a mate. So I'll meet you for two beers Tuesday night, you know, you mind your own business. And Tuesday night, next thing you know, it's 4 a.m. and it's, <laughs> you're in a club somewhere. You know, how did this happen, you know? Yeah, the unplanned The quiet mates. little drink is the best one. So that sounds like the kids, bar, the brother's basketball Caught the family. For sure. You just got the feel and off it went from there. For sure. Those unplanned nights are the, are the best nights. Yeah. You're just kind of figuring it out. Yeah, you bet. By the hour. You bet. There you go. What about you, mate? I've been sitting here trying to listen and trying to, at the same time, think of like a cool answer, but I don't really have one. So I'll just... Uh, he just got engaged, by the way, so he's, he's not going to... Yeah, I'm very like, boring. But to, to that point... Out. I, I hardly ever go out after games because I'm usually trying to like I'm right. in a race to get to sleep because it's it's hard for me. Yeah. And uh, one night last year after a Melbourne game, I, I went out with some of the boys in Melbourne. Again, I never do that. Mm. I'm going home, and I'm not even just saying that to mm. like be clean skin. I'm just I actually am a bit of a drag. But <laughs> I'm there with uh, Sean Bruce of all people in the corner, just mind our own business and. Out of the mosh pit comes my first girlfriend from college to... Randomly. Out of, just in Melbourne to say good day. Out of nowhere, there's people everywhere. And um, I guess I'm pretty tall, so it's maybe easy to find. But that was maybe a lesson in why you're supposed to just go home and read a book or something. Yeah. But that was, a, that was a fun... Daylight? Was that daylight? It was uh, no, it was it was very much nighttime when we wrapped that up. And <laughs> oh, okay, right, okay, <laughs> that's home. good. We've had to fly it early, but that, that to my best night out ever. That's a bit of a sad answer, but I, I pivot a just little. Just twelve bit. months, just twelve months. Yeah, so the last right. twelve months. That's yeah. okay. That's yeah, cool. That was a real thrill. <laughs> so the last twelve months, what? So what happened? Like Europe, tough. Yeah, it didn't was, happen. Didn't feel right. No, nah, it was. I think it just didn't work out. You know, some situations are. Yeah different type of situations and I don't put anybody at fault you know no, no. I always look no, myself like that. Yeah. so yeah. the way I look at it I could have performed better um, but the situation was the situation and it didn't mm. work out but I still had a great time um, in Serbia I had never been to Europe Belgrade was a very very fun place oh yeah yeah extremely so it was so it wasn't tough living there it wasn't the living environment nah not at all I had a great time in my couple months mm. that I was there got to Played with some great guys. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was, really wasn't a drag, for real. It was, it was a cool couple months. Mm, mm. We're seeing kind of how how hard it is to stick in in general. Like in the NBA this week, we've seen, like, our mate Zave got, yeah, for you know, sure. let go today. Mm. And, like, seeing how well he did here to make that leap and then it just didn't quite stick because, you know, GM leaves. There's a million different reasons. For it's sure. Just, mm. It's an opportunity, you know. And Zay's a great player too. Just I know he'll land on his feet. But Absolutely. Like like I said earlier, it's about opportunity and situation and the best fit. And it just, you know, like it didn't work out for me over there. It didn't work out so much for him there. But I'm sure he had a great time and I'm sure he learned a lot from it. And like I said before, I know he'll land on his feet. Just yeah. how hard is it to stick in something like the NBA and, yeah, you it's, know, it's carve tough. out a little niche for yourself. It's tough. It's very tough. Um, simply because there's a new there's a new 60 guys coming every year. Um, young guys, younger than you. Um, coaches flip-flop a lot, you know. So systems change, roles change. and GMs. GMs change. So it's it's not easy, you know. It's you, Like you say, you almost got to carve out what you do well and just be great at it, just be great at a role. You see, like, a lot of role players who may not even be, like, the best players but are just great at what they do, great rebounders or great locker room guys or 
you know, just really solid point guards who don't turn the ball over. Um, so, yeah, I think it's just about finding finding your niche in there and just being able to, you know, just adapt almost. Kind of got to have a real adaptability to stay in that league. It's hard. Um, mm-hmm. They told me the it's it's harder to stay than it is to get there. You know, getting there is one thing. Staying is another thing, and getting back is a whole another story. So, you know, it's a it's difficult, but you know the journey's fun, and you get to learn a lot from it. So, mm. well, I think with basketball, it's such a global game now. There are opportunities, so, but it's the show. Definitely, it's the show. It's the for sure. It's the one thing that I guess every basketballer dreams of to get there. If you play one game or you know four hundred games, whatever that number is, you for know. sure. But uh, it sort of highlights what a what a Unicorn LeBron is. He just keeps going. Can I tell you, 20 years? How do you do that? It's ridiculous. Well, I mean, he's, I don't know, he's one of the best players ever, if not the best, so. And we're not going to go there today. Yeah, I'm not going to dive into that one, but, (laughs) but, you know, just the way that he take care of his body, you know, just being able to to do it at that level for so long is just. A tremendous accomplishment. Man. I'm 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 trying to recall now, but I someone told me when I was living over in the US that he was he or I read it somewhere he spends over a million dollars a year out of his own pocket on his well being and to the extent that he that he was with Miami or wherever it was that he had the gym that he built at home re- re- exactly reflected the gym that they had at the at the at the facility. For sure. So everything was you know and he's got. You know, it was, but you know, I guess it's easy when you make. I was about to say it's probably a lot easier. Yeah, when he's, <laughs> exactly you know, right. The highest paid tax deductions well. in the world. One of them. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, facts. Those LA taxes. Oh my god. Oh man. Well, he's, well, he wasn't playing tax in Florida. That That's right, a fact. Miami. He made a business move. <laughs> he, he sure did. He sure did. I was living in Connecticut when he announced the "I'm taking my talents to South Beach." For they sure. had the. They had the, lawn, the, the Boys and Girls Club of America in Greenwich, Connecticut. It's crazy. It was mad. The town was mad that night. It was crazy. I imagine there's probably a lot of people, specifically yeah. from Cleveland, that were probably a little mad about it. But he paid it for it, though. A few TVs. Well, I think nice. the Knicks thought they were getting in because they were doing the announcement in, uh, in, in, Ken- in Connecticut, just, just north of New York mm-hmm. City. Yeah. Set him up. Yeah, he sure did. <laughs> but I did think he, I have read that he said that was a sort of didn't go great. Cause it was, like, yeah. yeah. It's not. It was a funny decision. Well, yeah. I think the whole, the, the way they announced it. <laughs> yeah. The, that was they were raising money for the Boys and Girls Club. That was the thing. It was a good thing. Yeah. So even probably the announcement and all is probably what made people the most mad. It was televised announcement <laughs> about where he's going as a free agent. But at least it was for a good cause. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Someone made money. It was good. For that sure. was really, really good. Yeah, yeah. So, mate, you're, um, so you're back here and you're enjoying, enjoying the things with the Kings. It's all right. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Everyone's being nice. Yeah. Yeah, everybody except Jordy. <laughs> Jordy's still Jordy. He's getting big boots, mate. He's getting all his profile. He's get he's busy cutting out clippings of himself now. Yeah, he's the coolest ever, man. Uh, he's Starter. Hoop, he's balling right now. Nah. <sighs> Doesn't know how to act. It goes away as quick as it comes if you're not. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, it's all right. We get our big big man DJ Hoag back this week. Yeah, that's gonna be fun, man. Um that's my guy too. It's, uh I play with DJ. I've known DJ for a little while now. Yeah. Played with him in the G League a little bit. When um, you say that, do you... Oh, you played the G League together. So mm-hmm. you did... You were teammates. It wasn't a summer league thing. Nah, but like in the in the summer in... I think it was college. We played on the same team at a couple camps. Right. Uh, that's kind of where I first met him. And then playing with him in the G League. It was just a real close team. So mm. it was more than just, you know, teammates. It was a real close Was he a spot-up shooter then? Was he... Yeah, I mean, he got a game, though. He could shoot, for sure, but he got a mm. game outside of just being a knockdown shooter. Yeah. But, yeah, that's that's probably what he hangs his hat on. He'll probably Ooh. tell you that. He was a king's killer last year. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, used to, I used to get the heebie-jeebies <laughs> when he went up the court. I'd be just going, oh, my God, here we go again. What's he going to do to us? Yeah, you know? sure. So I was pretty glad to get him on board. What about my efforts to get you back, mate? Have you ever been, ever been, <laughs> have you ever been recruited so hard? <laughs> I can say I can honestly say I've never had an owner anywhere, or just someone who's sitting at the top, like a school president, 
call me and text me. Beg you. In the middle of the, <laughs> in the, middle of the summer. I'm not too proud to beg. Don't you worry. I'm not too proud to beg. Yeah, no, nah, it was love. It was love. So oh, was, yeah. No, we're good, man. We're yeah, good. for sure. We're good. For sure, you know good. We love each other. We're yeah. good. We got love in the club. The feeling was real. The feeling was it's, real. It's like we're like the Philadelphia of basketball. We're the, we're the, we're the, we're the, where there's love in our, our city, sure. man. You know, I'm an Eagles fan, too. There we go. So Eagles is your team. What about yeah. your NBA team? What's your NBA team? I don't really. I used to have an NBA team as a kid, but you know, as it's you definitely not the Wizards after the. <laughs> it's screw them. It's nah, never the nah. Wizards, yo. No, nah, we're grateful for Zave. He got a. He got a, some. He got. He got a payday out of yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. Right. Yes, that's nice why it goes. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. Is good. that as Come you start playing dinner. playing those guys? It feels a bit weird. Yeah, like, man, I love Ross Westbrook, and now he's across the floor. It's yeah, for weird. sure. <laughs> I think you almost got to erase that. Like, you almost. Yeah. You're allowed to still be, you know, a fan in, in some regard. You grew up watching those guys, but there's no way you can be sitting on the court in awe and you got a guard dude. Like, it's, that's going to end up wearing? bad for you. Mm. See, I, I was smart about that. I never wore – I used to wear Kai. Everybody knows I wear Kyrie. That's all I wear. And the only time I didn't wear Kyrie's was when we played Kyrie. Yeah. I wore some PGs. Do you think you noticed? I don't think so. <laughs> I hope not. I mean, you see it. <laughs> you never know. You never, never know. He went home. He was pretty bummed. Jay wasn't wearing shit. Yeah, for sure. Kyrie's yeah. that game. Yeah, he didn't say nothing to me. And then <laughs> yeah. I hey, man, wasn't getting. You're not wearing any Kyrie's. Yeah, what's going on? He's insulted. Yeah, Did he put sure. thirty on you? Nah, he. He thought he was chilling. He might have been chilling because I wore some PGs. Out of respect. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you intimidated him. <laughs> hey, uh, what about your brother? So. So full disclosure, I, even the, one of the moves I tried was the uh, how about we bring you and your brother? Like let's get you both out here. Mm -hmm. And Jay, he's no, that's not a good nah, idea. He's he got to go do his own thing. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, he's how's a, he going? And where is he now? He's in uh, Latvia, um, yeah. playing Champions League. He's doing his thing right now. He's averaging twenty plus. Really getting minutes? Yeah, he's playing. He's doing his thing. Um, he's starting. Do you like a bigger, more talented version of you? He, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> <laughs> but he's he's bigger than me for sure. I will say this was the most competitive summer that we've ever had. On the, like you and him going yeah, at it. Yeah, in terms yeah. of me and him going at it. Like usually it's, I got to get a group, group of guys and he's in it. Right. But I think this summer just me and him we just went to war every day and he really? could go, man. So you know, you know what our conversation was about bringing him out here, so Yeah. Yeah, for sure. No, no, it was, you were right. You were, well, you, your view was firm. No, that that's not going to be good for him. Yeah, he's got to go sure. and he's got to do his own thing. And um, you know, yeah, he's a talented player, man. We might, you might end up in lap for you next year. We'll get him here. Yeah, you never know. We, we'll swap it out. Interchange. Fuck it. <laughs> 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 As we speak. International trade. Yeah, it's, it's, it's player movements, mate. It's player movements. They should play with? trades in this league. Do you reckon that would be? It'd be dope, man. I mean, obviously, it'd be a little different to uproot your whole life over yeah. here without the same. Yeah, look, it's it's complicated, and and Bogues is a big proponent of it, mm. and you know, and uh, and I can understand it. In the last couple of weeks, you've had DJ Vasiljevic moving around, all mm. the all the dramas that come off the back of that, or so called dramas, and um, it drives conversation, it drives interest, and For sure. yeah, you know, we've got there are. You know, obviously the CBA and the Players Association and players' willingness to move, but we've had a circumstance a couple of years ago. In fact, when we brought Zave back, you know, we had to let a player go and we couldn't we couldn't place that player. Yeah. Because the process really wasn't set up like that to say, look, we've got someone, can we move this player to another club and then, you know, and so on and so forth. But I, I look, as, this, as the league matures, I guess through, you know, and as more investment comes in and there's more money to drive these decisions, then mm. players will, if they're willing to move, when well, you may think it'd be possible, but For to sure. think, you know, you're in the back third of the season and a team wants to make a trade to move a couple of pieces and, you know, someone's gone, they so not so good, so they move them out and then it could sure. be good for everyone. It could be a good result. I think it just gives it a little more flexibility in the league. Yeah. You know? Do you need a draft, do you think, to involve... You know, picks as part of that capital trade. Probably, capital. probably young talent. Maybe you change the next stars up into the draft process. Maybe. Oh, mm. they ooh. Oh, what do you think of the next stars? What do you reckon about it? I think it's beautiful, man. Especially the, the um, just the recognition that they get uh, worldwide. You know, yeah. um, you see kids get drafted as next stars over mm. here. I think it's just good for the league and it's good for them. Just. Gives them an opportunity to play against some 
real pros that are older than them, you know, instead of going to college. And would it have been something you'd have considered in that sense? Probably. I don't think I was at eighteen. I don't, think, I don't think I was good enough. To right. Really. That, but yeah, for sure. But there were some things that I figured out in college right. that I feel like college I really was right needed. for you. Yeah. yeah, you weren't ready for pro. Nah, right. not as an eighteen year old. Right. Nah. But that's what I'm saying. To, to see the 18 and 19 year olds doing what they're doing in the league and making an impact, like that's, I think that'll do nothing but help their game in a mm. major way. You know, they're playing professional systems yeah. against pros. I think it's some of the best pros that we've seen in the next size program. Obviously, there's a few more of them. But For sure. Like guys ready yeah. to contribute. Yeah. For sure. I, I think it's, I wasn't a fan of it initially. And we, look, we were the beneficiary of it. You know, we had Didi come through. I was a, he was a draft and stash. But, you know, we you know, we had um, Brian Bowen. He mm -hmm. uh, was the first next star, came to Sydney and uh, five years ago. And, you know, tough circumstances. The, the college system wouldn't accept him. So he sort of came here by default under that model of the next stars. But, you know, and I, I kind of, I've always questioned it a little bit. And, you know, but I, I think now... The fact that so that every team's virtually got one, mm -hmm. it does set up a situation to your point that could this be a, a, a draft model where the sure. you know it's a bit of a there's ten guys and these are the ten guys that have been selected into a limited field of players that are prepared to come and sure. clubs have got needs and so on and so forth. You need a big, you need a you know, guard or something like that. Because for the Kings to win a championship last year and then next start be two this year. Kind of cheating, <laughs> but just don't <laughs> <laughs> you? You so mean this so, is the Perth Wildcats people? Come he's on, he's just so that. talented, man. Like he's so talented. At just 18, bro. To 18 years old. Like I was the same as you. I needed to go to college, sit on the bench for a few years. For sure, for sure. <laughs> just to learn, to you know, yeah. get get in the weight room. But Tui's already a problem in the weight room. He's confident, you know. Got good body, good feet. Mm. He got game, man. So. Hats off to two in, yeah. the, in the next star program. And his so, family, you know, and, and the, he went through the Centre of Excellence, the NBA Academy. Mm -hmm. So he's he's come through the system, the Australian system. And, you know, and you know we're in a situation now with Zave getting cut today. I read something on social media, people saying, oh, you know, Australia's got to develop players differently. Mm -hmm. What you're really looking at is the product of Josh Greens and the, you know, the Tui's and these guys that are coming through now are genuine products, you know, sure. and, and they've got a real real career ahead of them, you know. Absolutely. So we're lucky to have them for a period of time and how that all works out, but it's uh, it's definitely a positive for us, yeah. For sure. Yeah. What's missing from the league? What do you, what would you, apart from private aircraft travel, what would you, what would you like to, <laughs> <laughs> would you like to see? <laughs> um, I think I answered this the last time I was here. I think... I think just other leagues don't have import limitations, right? As to three, mm. yeah. Um, like you see those higher Euro League teams and stuff like that, and they have great Euro European players, obviously. But there's five, six Americans on those teams, you know, mm. that they're bouncing in between ten minutes to twenty minutes, and they're all just helping and playing roles. So it just feels like a little more. Now, obviously, you don't want to take anything away from the Australians. Mm. So I think it's a give or take kind of thing. But, mm. you know, just mm. maybe another import slot, obviously. some. I think with the expansion, potential expansion of the league and the increased number of teams. For sure, I was going to say that too. Yeah, I think that's probably where that plays in. But uh, that's way outside my pay, my pay grade. And <laughs> last time I looked, the NBL don't appreciate my advice. On that thing, so I, I'll keep that to myself if you can in a podcast environment. Sure. <laughs> I think, anyway. Try to edit it, I guess. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> we can cut that out. Yeah. yeah That's weird. fine. Yeah. And then, um, so from here, where to? What's, uh, how's the season looking? You know, we've, here, what are we, two and four? Four and two. Four, four and, and two, two, hopefully. Better four than three and six, I must say. Yeah, it's better we than three and six. Amen. Three and six was that night, the night, in, the night against Brisbane. I think so, huh? Did you? I was at that game with yeah. a broken foot in the front row. Yeah, I think that was the first away game you went to. Yeah, yeah. No, I was in Sydney. It was in Sydney. You did it in oh. Sydney. The Duncan no, 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 Sydney. The Bris oh, yeah. Well, we played them back to huh? No, we played them. We were we were three and we were three and five, mm -hmm. and then we lost. No, we lost up there. Remember that? Yeah, we and Chase, lost there. Chase went nuts in the. Well, he gave that big talk in the, yeah, locker, in the locker room. room. That was all on tape. The kumbaya. And then we came. That was a Friday night. and Came back on Sunday, and then you elevated. Yeah. Slam dunk. Slam dunk. Have you ever done that before? 
Yeah, I actually did it the year before. Not for game, but the year before I caught a good little dunk. Should pull it up. Yeah, let's get that. <laughs> well, see, when Casper Ware played here, I used to give him crap. I said, come on, man, when are you going to dunk, you know? I used to call him a WNBA player because he can't dunk. He didn't like it. Oh, I was all right. I was all in good fun. But uh, he said, look, if I ever get a breakaway in the first quarter, he said, I think I can elevate. I think I can get there. I wonder why the first quarter. Because he's fresh. The fresh legs. Fresh legs. Yeah, true. That was like you went out, you went and dunked it over the top of three guys in the last minute. Yeah. Like, I mean, man, oh, man. It, was, it happened right in front of us. Yeah, definitely best play. It was pretty good. Probably in my, in my life. Really? In my young, young career. Oh. Yeah. Tell you what, I'm glad we all shared it, man. Yeah, for sure. And I said after the game in the locker room, I said, someone said that, you know, that's an amazing turn. I said, that could change. That I literally said... And I, I, I did say, I said, that not only change our season, that could change the next three seasons. And, it, and yeah. I've no doubt that that, if we'd have gone three and, three and seven, I don't know where we would have landed. For sure. Probably so, would have made some changes. That's a loud two points, man. That's a very loud two points, I guess. <laughs> and then missed the free throw. <laughs> and then missed the free throw. <laughs> I was too excited. It was a dive. There's no way that free throw was going in. Yeah. Rel, yeah I was rel, trembling. Rel dealt with it. I don't know for if the sure. video can be cut up over the top of the video for this, but there was that Dave walked back towards the camera and he, he walked up and it was went into the huddle around the pre free throw. Dave just gone, oh my god, like, <laughs> he didn't say anything, but his facial expression was pre so classic, it was like, oh Jesus Christ, I imagine it surprised everybody because I didn't even dunk in practice. I don't think I, I might have had like one fast break dunk, one or two in practice, but I'm sure no, they don't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> it was, mate. It caught it me off guard. Else. Yeah. Anyway, so here we are. Here we are. So, so we're back, back to living in Sydney Olympic Park, in, over in Paradise, Western Sydney. Yeah. Love it. I mean, I, yeah. You got your apartment. Olympic Park is cool. I don't really do much, so, you know. You got your old apartment back or you got your old lounge back? Essentially, I got my apartment back. It's it's a couple floors lower, but it's the same it smells corner. smells the same. Same corner, same furniture. Internet and air conditioning, right? That's all I need. Two things in life, two two of the essentials. They're human rights now, it, internet and air conditioning. It definitely should be. <laughs> yeah. Everybody deserves air conditioning. With DJ Hogue yeah, blowing up the Lux. No air conditioning in his apartment. Yeah, for sure. So he went and bought one from Harvey Norman. And I've ordered another one for him today out of my pocket because he reckons he's, <laughs> I need my boys, I need my boys nice and cool. So uh, It's good to know that that that's, uh, that's an option. He's getting his new Harvey Norman air conditioner tomorrow. <laughs> that's so what's up. So we'll, uh, we'll, we, we need him nice and fresh. That's what's up. We that's, don't want him getting cooked. I'd be over there sometimes taking naps, so. Oh, do you? Yeah, you're talking about me for real. And does he wear Speedos? Does he wear Speedos? Yeah. I don't know. I haven't seen him in Speedos. He's not, I don't think he's a Speedo guy. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing, thing down at Bronte, isn't it? The Speedos? Yeah, I don't know if DJ's one to yeah, jump DJ's, on that bandwagon. He's pretty short. Tui. Tui busts Speedos out for a nice part after yeah. the game. Longley does. Longley's yeah, a big yeah. Speedo man. So a wild guy to be wearing Speedos. He's a little too big for, <laughs> for Speedos. Well, you know that documentary they made, Australian Story? I don't know if you've seen... Oh, no, it was, yeah, Australian Story. He's laying in the in the ocean at Green Pools in Western Australia. In Speedos? In Speedos and a, and a cap. It's it's, uh, he's, uh, he it's powerful, doesn't care. It's he doesn't powerful. care. He just owns it. That's gangster. Is it? You know, so <laughs> he, when he, have you ever been over there to his place? No, I haven't. He told me... Uh, before I left last time, it would make it happen, but it didn't happen, so hold him to it this time. I went down we'll there. We'll all just show up unannounced. <laughs> and speed us. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't imagine. Do you, you, go on, you go on the beach? You go on the water? Yeah, I have lately. That's what I'm saying, man. I'm really enjoying Sydney this time Jeez. around. I don't, I've been in the water. I've been just laying on the beach, which is crazy to me. I don't understand it. It's unbelievable. Yeah. It's really He's got a novel out. He's, he's you know, yeah, what, are you, yeah, what are you watching at the moment? Um, apart from just tape, watch. apart from moods tapes. Yeah, apart from film, he doesn't believe that I watch film either. It's the craziest thing in the world. Bro. You know they got, a, you know they got a system. They can check what you've been watching. You know, but I watch it, I just watch the game back on KO though. Right? It's, it's, you get a full sense of what's the, going the on. The rich experience, you know. <laughs> Shout out the free KO man. Yeah. <laughs> but what I just watch, I watch Power lately. Yeah. No, you don't watch. No, no. What do you watch? Power. That's a new. There's a new spinoff, right? Or is it? Yeah, the, the new spinoff with uh, Tommy Egan, White the Power. Guy. What's it on Netflix or something? What's it on? It's on Stars. 
Right. I think Amazon does that out here. Yeah, Could be wrong. I don't know who has stars out here, but... I, I've been chomping down hard on mornings, morning show, which is... Eliza morning? No, the morning show. It's that... Steve it's Carell. A, it's a Apple Steve TV. Carell. Uh, Jennifer Aniston. Jennifer Aniston. And... Um, but it's gone a bit haywires. It's gotten... It's, these shows, they come along and then they're really great. And they're so believable, but then it just arcs out into the unbelievable. And yeah, I, I just sure. can't keep up with it. Every, every idea's got to be a TV show these days and they don't, you know, it's great long format. They yeah. don't necessarily have it open and shut in their mind before they start writing. For sure. <laughs> what do you think of Winning Time? I didn't watch it. You didn't watch be it? Honest. Didn't, but didn't they cancel it? They canceled yeah, it. Just got, it did two series, yeah. Yeah, I didn't watch it. I'm not going to lie. I, it's, it's on there for me to yeah. watch when I get there. I was pretty pissed about it because I went. I was invited to the launch thing here, and they had the guy who played um, the guy, who, uh, the Aussie who played um, Jason Clark. Who played? Who did he play? Uh, Jerry West. Jerry West and the fella that played uh, Magic. That's dope. The fella that played Magic. I swear to God, he's five foot eight. <laughs> I don't know. And then. And I just feet. couldn't get yeah, it. Like, I'm not, he really, <laughs> and of course, I didn't really appreciate how great the Jerry West character was because I hadn't even seen the series. So I really didn't, like, I didn't engage and didn't talk to these people or whatever, but the guy that played... I don't think Jerry West was too chuffed about how no, he was. No, I don't think he was. <laughs> either, but, uh, I, so the magic of television, they made, it, they made MJ look, uh, they made magic look big and in real life he's... he's that that he's, was a great show. It was uh, not, not that big. Yeah, so something else, something else, yeah. We got to check it out. Yeah, 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 you got to do that. HBO, gotta, that's HBO, right? Yeah. Yeah, HBO. Yeah. You, never, you never watched it? No. It's pretty hard. How, how do you feel about? I find I don't not gravitated towards like sports, drama and that TV. Like I yeah. really enjoyed Winning Time, but I don't know something about like when I see a sports movie or sports TV show, I'm like, I'm big crime. It's nice. my job. Crime drama. Yeah. Not so much drama, but. But you're you're like a you're a that. science fiction guy. Uh, yeah, science fiction. See, fantasy. I'm not. That's I'm, 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 I don't. I can't do it. No, can't no, do you it. didn't even do Game of Thrones. Like no, nah. Game Tol of Thrones. No, nah, nothing. Fire. Yeah, nothing. Game of Thrones. Nah. Hate, hate sure. television. Iron Man's Facts. about the most I'll take of that's science fiction. That's is that sci-fi? Does that go in that category? Yeah, yeah superhero is kind of the, it's all fantasy stories, but all the tech and, you know, yeah. all that. It's kind of a I just of like mix. Robert Downey Jr. I do. Tony Stark. That Terrific. Iron Man movie was Tony pretty, Stark, pretty yeah. excellent. I want to, I want, if I died and come back, I want to be Tony Stark, <laughs> I think. When I die and come back, I should say. <laughs> well, when, when he died, he wanted to be Paul Smith. Yeah, well. <laughs> Tell you what, I've nearly died a few times under the Sydney Kings. I can trust me on that. I can say right now. That's, that's a near-death near experience on occasions, I must say. What they call it, they used to call it, the... This is right the heart, when I got the, the, the Violet Crumbles, the heartbreak. The cardiac kings. kings. Cardiac kings, cardiac yeah. Cardiac kings. I, I I had nearly had I think the closest I've come to a heart attack was Brucey's three pointer when we beat Illawarra. Did you see that one? When he hit the I did the night night. Oh my god. That something. That's tough. To even think to celebrate like that that fast. So what do you do? <laughs> you, is he practicing that at home, you he reckon? He might be practicing that. <laughs> it has to be. Leave the follow through up, goes right to it. Huge. We goes might to have practice. to get him in for that one. We might have to deconstruct no that. No interview, event. just no, get him correct. to do that and go. <laughs> 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 to end the show. Poor old Illawarra. Yeah, that was a tough night for those boys. Uh, that was a tough one. But anyway, that's all good. So, Jalen, it's been good having you on board, mate. Good to be here. Um, I think we've uh, uh, we got some gimmick stuff we can do. Yeah, do you want a couple more things? Let's break it for the ad and then... Okay, Wrap we're going to go to a break, ad break here with Harvey Norman and Rogue, and then we'll come back for the... Uh, Drink some the, Wilder. Yeah, the, <laughs> the final five, the starting five. The starting right, five. We'll be right back. So this is maybe a bit of a gimmick, Jay, but, you know... We're going to test with, it on you. Yeah, test stay it. with us. This is part of the train wreck that you're a part of. Mm. Mm. Just a bit of a segment, but... You. We, uh, we want you to build us a starting five, but not like boring, who's your all-time NBA, more like, you know, cultural bit. Sh shed some wisdom on us about food in the DMV is kind of what we're going for. But I don't want like With a top, top five. five. <laughs> no, 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 it's not a top five. You're building a basketball starting five. So point guard is not like, you know, it's not your number one. I want it to be like, who's running the show? Who's like, who's feeding the fam out there? What's, uh, what's your go-to for that? Okay. I make this work. See, I'm, I done ate everywhere, though. 
Well, that's good because right. you need five different options for right, specific right, criteria. So, um, I'll try to go off some recency. I got to throw, like, what if I throw Chipotle in it as wild? I'm not going to lie. Cool. Well, you could build. Do you All want right, me to so explain Chipotle that? Chipotle at, like, the, Chipotle the would have to be, that's, that's like, at the four. That's your power forward, so, like, yeah. stretch a bit different every time? For sure, it's, like, you know, you kind of get the same thing. You know what you're getting from. Yeah, yeah. You know what you're getting from Chipotle. You know what you're mm. getting from the four, man. Yeah. And it, But it's reliable, though. Mm. You know? I would say that's a five. Like, you know, Good. solid, does a little things, a bit Could underrated, be. pretty handsome. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Hang on. <laughs> no, I mean, we can use that to describe so, okay. the four, man. So we'll go four. We'll go, we'll go four or five. Leave right it open on. for now. Right. Um, gotta be wings. I'm a big America's Best guy. Yeah. America's Best Wings. Honey, lemon, peppers. What's that, two, two man, like knockdown shooter? That's the score. Reliable, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the score. What are you, you 20 pack, or what do you normally do? 20, for sure. 20, yeah. Fries are extra crispy. Right. Yeah, three ranches. Okay, any seasonings on the fries? Yeah, Old Bay, for sure. That's, uh, a, that's a go-to. I'm getting hungry. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, that's the score We right need there. snacks in here. We do. That's, yeah. like, that's like the fam knows to get me that. Like, like if your mum wants you to come home, she's gonna she calls you and says, I got, I got wings. For sure. That's okay. a knock, knockdown shooter. Uh, that's a, sure. That sounds like a two-man. Yeah, that's yeah. a two-man. Right Three-man, like versatile, kind okay. of do it all. What's what's going on there? I'll shout out my man's restaurant, uh, Bukum Cafe. This is the one where you have the biggest night out of your life. Yeah. Good night. <laughs> Great food, though. How do you, you spell know? it? Bukum. How's it? B-U-K-O-M. B-U-K-O-M. And what's the cuisine? It's African food. Right. Like, but it's good, though. It's like, Whatever you need. So I'll go there, i get some suya. Yeah. yeah. You know, they make wings for me. Special. Have you got, have you, if you go in, is there a Jalen Adams item on the menu? The Jalen burger or something? I feel like, like it's the wings. But, like, it's not, obviously, you know, it's not my restaurant. No, but, of course. But they know, like, you know, it's my guys. They know that if I come in there, they're like, you want some wings? So if there's 20 people out the front, you can walk straight to the front of the line and go in? Oh, for sure. Oh, through the right, kitchen. Right, right. Good yeah. fellas. Yeah, I go through the kitchen. Yeah. Like president. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Those are my guys, though. Shout out to them. Yeah. Book them. Book them Cafe, man. All so right. I need a big and I need a point guard. So at the one, what's the one dude? He's just like the facilitator? Yeah, he's, he's the... feeding the fam, man. Running the show. Maybe high IQ, but I wouldn't say that in front of a point guard. So is is it this point guard? It's Sydney King's PG. What's that's that mean? Grandma house. That's yeah. grandma house. I grandma live, house. I live two two minutes from my grandmother. Oh, let's go. Oh, that's a good answer. So it's not a restaurant. It's not a restaurant. That's a good answer. That's, right. that's grandma house. That's right a provider. Oh, that's man. the provider right there. Even when you don't Hearts want food. Hearts are breaking right now, you Jay. You know that's the distributor right there. Grandma wow. is. What? She get, she make everything and anything, and she's an expert at every meal. And no judgment. No. Oh, you get a bit of judgment from Granny, surely. She not. I mean, she she called me after the last game, actually. She said, you need to, you need to get in the gym. <laughs> so you need to shoot better. She's that type of grandma. I like your grandma. Yeah, so. <laughs> Give me your phone number. Yeah, so. She's the one. Does she have a go-to? Like, what's is there um, a specialty yeah. though? What does she make all the time? Mm. I'm trying to think. So, like that come home meal. That come home, I haven't seen in a while. Yeah. It's usually some ribs, baked beans, mac and cheese, candy yams. Mm. See, now you had me into candy yams. <laughs> you can't do the candy yams? I'm not. That's the best <sighs> thing on the Thanksgiving lineup yeah, right there. Yeah, and when we lived in the, in the States, Thanksgiving to me was like Christmas for a member of the Jewish fraternity. I just We just didn't get it. Yeah, that's tough. <laughs> we didn't get it. But particularly what I didn't <laughs> get was How do you not wrap the, your head around... Buckets of food and ah oh, yeah, times. but it was it, it was a, it was a an American colonialization. <laughs> so we like Christmas. You know, Christmas is, is so big for Aussies, you know, and yeah. such a big thing. It's such a you know because you know in the states you got Thanksgiving, you got yeah. Halloween, all that sort of stuff. Then Thanksgiving kicks in where families get together, and Christmas is you know is not it's not a two or three day. It's only a couple of days off in the states, you know. Like yeah. Thanksgiving's a, a bigger holiday. Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday for sure. Yeah, yeah. And I just, we, we used to go overseas. We used to get cheap flights to Italy or something like that. We'd go away for a week. Sure. It was my daughter's birthday. She was born on Thanksgiving Day mm. in Sydney on, when she was born a thousand years ago, whenever that was. But, um, <laughs> but um, uh, sorry, Maddie. But uh, they, um, but yeah, the, the, the whole notion of savory food with sweet things on top. 
just doesn't happen. It's not happening for me at all. So you stick with your grandma's candy yeah, hands. Right I'm a, grandma. I respect it. Respect, respect, she respect. She and then we need the big. If she shows up, I might tell her, make you a plate. Just make it half, a, make it a little corner. Just try it. All right. <laughs> Out the edgy bit. The, the crispy it. bits on the edge. Sure. That's yeah, all yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. Let's go. Well, you got, you went Chipotle. Uh, that feels like the solid. That feels like your big man. Like it's, Probably my five. Yeah. Just yeah. all reliable, you know? So would I go? Chipotle, you need a four man. I'm, what? Uh, how do you America's even sum best. up a four man these days? It's kind of like a bit of everything, depending on the. Wasn't yeah. Chipotle the three or something like that? No, Chipotle, no, Chipotle is the five. He moved to the five because Jordy feels like he's all reliable. Right. Yeah, and Chipotle gives me the runs. <laughs> Take it. <laughs> I feel like it jams up everybody's stomach a yeah. little bit. Yeah, it's right. it's like you it's worth it, it though. Right. Yeah, you, it's, you always need it in a pinch, and then it's like you need a detox for a few days before going back. For sure. Yeah. Um, How do you, what's a four man these days, man? It's a stretch big. Yeah, just. More versatile, I guess. Yeah. Versatility like the two. I yeah. guess, no, the two is a knockdown shooter. The two is a knockdown. Three. three was your versatile. Four. Bit different depending on who it is, right? Depending on the team. Yeah, what I do guess you I can go. What have I been eating lately? I'm trying to think of my late lease. You're um, a pizza guy? Nah. I like pizza. Who doesn't like yeah, pizza? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, but it's not, yeah. It's yeah. not in your starting five. Nah. Pizza's not my starting five. Mm. I'm going to go with, so I've been eating at my man. He just, another another friend. I can't walk through the kitchen at this spot, though. He just has a lot of good food, great refreshments. It's called uh, Soul Baltimore Sports, Sports Bar. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's mad good food. And I've been there. I'm not even a Ravens fan, but I'll go watch a game, get some food. And it's mad stuff on the menu, too, so it's mad creative. I and imagine after that shout-out, you'll be able to walk through the kitchen. Yeah, yeah for sure, man. So hopefully, you know, tag them if they... <laughs> you better warn them. They're going to be great. mobbed by people after yeah. this podcast. <laughs> elite, yeah, elite, elite food in there. Good vibes, you know, music, football games on Sundays. Good vibes. good vibes probably sums up actually a good four man yeah for sure <laughs> just there for the good vibes. vibes good vibes sounds like a good wind up for our whole show <laughs> good vibes There's a bit of love in the room yeah for yeah? sure All right. love it. well that's our first episode J.A. thanks for the insights easy um, as that covered some territory didn't didn't uh, we, you didn't get hurt which is important for sure good luck this weekend mate both of you off to Cairns Love the coin, love the deep north. It'll be good. Deep north. Thanks, of course, to our sponsors, Harvey Norman and Road, for all their support. We appreciate that as, as they all that they do for us, and uh, and uh, we'll get ready for our second episode next week or whenever it comes around. Okay. One day. All right. Thanks, man. Stay, Stay safe out there, Jay. Thanks, brother. Thanks for having me. All right.